wake up in a gear. <laughs> Good morning world, welcome back to our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle. We're here in the town of Kharhorin in Mongolia. Last night I went to bed feeling not too great. Yesterday I started taking antibiotics for a chest infection, but after a cozy night in the gear, I woke up this morning feeling already a lot better. So yeah, let me show you guys where we're heading today. Okay, so we are here and today we're gonna to start by visiting a few spots around this area before taking this road up past Seseleg and continuing northwest up to finish the day at Turkin Sagan Lake, also known as White Lake. So the lake where we're aiming to camp tonight is about four hours from here. It's already 10.30 and we still have to pack up everything, so better hit the road, let's go. The weather is not looking very good this morning. I think we're gonna get very wet today. I'll just ride out of this area. Okay. Then you could jump on just after. Hey, this is kind of exactly where the horn is. So every time I do full lock this way, it's like gonna beep. Oh, there's a hole. <laughs> there's a bit of a hole. I can, wait a second. Yeah, I'm out, I'm out. It's okay, wait. Yeah, I'm trying to tear it as fast as possible. Wait a second. Way! <laughs> Front wheel went in a hole. <laughs> oh, I did not see that. Stick to the paths, Ollie, stick to the paths. Thank you. Very nice, thank you. Thank you. Tyre's good. <laughs> Still there. Bye. Bye bye. Beautiful. Yeah, that was a really cozy night, hey? Oh, it was so, so nice. <laughs> so this is Hakorin in front of us. It's not a very big place. The population is only 14,000 people, but it is really, really important historically for two main reasons. The first is that this was the site of the ancient city of Karakorum. It was actually the capital of the Mongol Empire between 1236 and 1260. So back then this place was booming. <laughs> <laughs> but not only that, but Khakhorin is also home to the oldest surviving Buddhist monastery in Mongolia, which is called Erden Zhu Monastery. And uh, Quite conveniently, it's right in front of us. <laughs> and this is our first stop for the day, is to go and visit the oldest monastery in Mongolia. We just asked the lady as well if she has any places to recommend um, at the White Lake where we're gonna sleep tonight. And she said there are many, many gears. So we will probably sleep in another gear tonight. <laughs> yeah, that would actually be really nice. I think it's such a good way to spend the night. Inside there, it's just so cozy and yes. like, yeah, I had a really good night. Yeah, me too. Beautiful.
We're here in Erdenzu Monastery. Erdenzu Monastery began construction in 1585. The ruler of the Kalka Mongols, Abtai Sain Khan, ordered the construction of this monastery after meeting with the third Dalai Lama. This is the oldest surviving Buddhist monastery in Mongolia. It's pretty awesome. It's really nice. The souvenir shop is inside a gear, and this gear has beautiful painted patterns on the wooden slats. So nice. Camels. So now we are going to visit the Karakoram Museum, which is actually not very far away. It's just like 0.1 of a mile in that direction. The sun is out! <laughs> kind of. 50-50 at the moment. We've put our rain gear on now as well. But here it is, the Karakoram Museum. It's actually quite a modern building. Looks really nice actually. Is it a good thing? Yeah. Oh, oh. Ready to go. <laughs> Hello. Hi. One hour later. So we're just having our lunch and we're hiding under this pagoda, which is part of the museum grounds. It started raining like crazy. To be honest, I'm kind of scared to hit the road. We haven't even got anywhere yet. It's already like one o'clock. It doesn't look very inviting today. No. No. So let's just enjoy an egg and cheese sandwich. Yes. <laughs> and uh, see if the weather improves. I just waterproof my boots. They have a lot of holes now. Olga and Sergey, they gave me actually plastic bags and some tape because it gets quite cold here as well. That's a professional job right there. Wow. All right, we had a break in the rain. Bye bye. <laughs> so we are going to hit the road. Yo! Yeah, actually it's looking a little bit blue skies over there, isn't it? Fingers crossed it stays dry. So we weren't allowed to film inside the museum. So we were just like, oh, it's okay. We'll make some notes <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you guys what we learned on the inside. So we learned that Karakoram was declared the capital of the Mongol Empire by Genghis Khan in 1220. And this was a pretty crazy city at the time. 10 to 15,000 people living here. The city had 12 Buddhist temples temples, two mosques and a Christian church. So it was a totally like multi-religious place, but not only multi-religious, but also uh, multi-ethnic. Apparently at the time there were people from Mongolia, Tibet, China, India, even Europeans living here in the 1200s. What happened after is that the grandson of Genghis Khan, the famous Kublai Khan, he actually moved the capital of the Mongol Empire from here, from Karakoram to Beijing because they took over China and they even renamed the Great Mongol Empire the Great Yuan Dynasty. But then it all fell to pieces. In 1388 the Great Yuan Dynasty was overthrown by the Min Dynasty of China and they basically came to Mongolia and completely destroyed the city and that was the end of Karakoram. That's crazy though, you would never imagine now looking at this small town which exists on this site, it was at one time the great center of the great Mongol Empire. But what's really interesting is that the population of the town is 14,500 people which is actually nearly the same population that it was at that time. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of people here hasn't really changed uh, in like a thousand years. So that was a really cool museum. It was 10,000 entry to the monastery and to the museum per person, which is about £2.50 per person. So in total, we've paid out only £10 this morning for all of those amazing things that we saw. Just hoping that this road is okay, but it seems all right. So we have one more site to visit here before we hit the road properly and that is just up here on the hill and that is the monument for the Mongol states and apparently you get a really nice view of this whole area. This entire area which is called the Orkhon Valley 
is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site because of the natural beauty of this valley but also the historical significance oh hold on where am I going gotta go down here I can see the monument up on the hill actually it's just up there Let's see how the road is to actually get up the hill though. Ooh. See if it's all right for us to ride. Yeah. Anyway, a really good point. When we drop the bike, we can quick relief our <laughs> Moscow motor panniers. So it will be easier to pick up the bike. <laughs> but anyway, we haven't dropped Bumblebee in a long time now. Oh no, don't say that. Oh my God. Now you've said that, I can oh, no. feel everything is going <gasps> wobbly. Everything. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> is this the road? No, this is not the road. Maybe there is no road. Okay, this is like here, like a roundabout. Ooh. Okay, wait one second. Just mm. trying to figure out what to do. Okay, I mean, there was a road over there, but... No. No. Ah, uh, yeah, he's pointing to go round. Uh, okay. We okay. just try and walk it through yeah. this bit. Yeah. Okay, yep, I'm good, good, good. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, this looks more like it. I think we might get there. Oh my god, is this really the parking place? What is going on here? <sighs> okay. Oh, at least this bit's concreted. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. That was a bit dodgy, but hey, look. There it is. Wow. The town of Hachorin. Beautiful. Look at all the colourful roofs. Yeah. Really, really cool. Really cool. Well, yeah, you can see here the map of Asia, and the gold part is representing the fullest extent of the Mongol Empire under Kublai Khan. Hey, look at that, eh? He nearly got the whole world. Yay! That's a lot of territory. Wow. And the blue part is Mongolia. <sighs> cool. Yeah, and it's like this typical Buddhism um, sculptures we see along the road as well. They're always putting like rocks on top of each other. Yeah, but this is a big one. Look at this. Huge. Yeah. Okay, let me just have a look here, what's going on? Oh Holy moly! Goodness. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Bit of an adventure obstacle course on the way down. So that was the Great Mongol Monument. And that is it for our sightseeing in Kachorin. But it's been actually a very, very, very cool town to explore. So many cool things to see so much history here it's just an amazing place but now it is time for us to uh get a move on and try and make some distance today so far we've clocked up a total of 3.7 miles <laughs> oh my god look at this i think i didn't take this road last time did i no i don't think that you did oh my goodness oh my okay god. it's okay it's okay it's okay, it's okay. oh sliding a little bit <sighs> <laughs> so it is time to make some progress now so we're aiming to make it four hours now down the road and finish the day at a lake called white lake wow look at this dog is it a bear is it a wolf yeah. no it's a mongolian sheepdog look wow. at them oh they are impressive beautiful we've got to try to get back to the tarmac yeah It all looks just as bad as each other. <laughs> all right, I'll go I'll go this way then. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good choice. Yeah. So now we just have to somehow get up there. Oh. Ah, here to the left. Yes, there we go. Back to tarmac.
Okay, so this road definitely has its challenges. Look at the amount of potholes in this road. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, it's like potholes, but then they've actually been cut out into squares. Like they're kind of ready to be filled in, but then there's just no one filling them in. If we go into that at 60 miles an hour, whew, yeah. that's our rear shot gone again. It will be quite painful for Bumblebee for sure. Uh, I just can't believe how many there are, you know? Yeah, quite a lot of obstacles in Mongolia, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Oh, it looks so cozy. It does. <laughs> but she's like milking the horse, I think. No way. Yes. I think they drink horse milk. <laughs> yeah, I guess they, they do, yeah. Because like, if you're a horse herder, you have to get everything that you need to survive from the horse, right? Yeah, true. Look at this crazy view! Just one massive grassy valley after the next, eh? Yeah. Endless. The world's largest petting zoo! Yeah! Good! <laughs> <laughs> so Guys, we just had to stop here because either these are some really hairy cows or well, this is our first yak herd. I'm pretty sure it's our first yak herd. But I want to go check out this fella because he's got some big horns. Cool. Oh, and he's doing this with his legs. Okay, I'm gonna not go too close. That means we've now seen herds of cows, goats, sheep, horses, camels, and yaks. And humans. Herds of traffic. <laughs> yes. This traffic just is barely moving. Wow, what a country, hey? What a country. Yeah, cool. That's amazing. So we just stopped here in the town of Tseselech and look at the mountains in the background of this town. It's a spectacular view. Yes, definitely. Anyway, I was super thirsty, so I thought we'd stop off at the mini market and uh, get ourselves a nice juice or something. And also, I can show you guys what it looks like on the inside of a Mongolian convenience store in the middle of the mountains. Ta-da! Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is what they got going on. Ooh, what's this? Some little shortbreads. Those look pretty good, to be honest. Okay, I'll see how much they are. Look, they've got all the regular stuff. Got Oreos. And look, a ton of different chocolate bars. They've even got Milka. Milka, Nestle, Haribo. It's pretty cool. What was I gonna get? Oh yeah, juice. Juice, juice, juice. Vodka, 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 vodka. All vodka. Here, all vodka. In fact, this is all vodka, all the way to here. That's like a whole massive corner dedicated to vodka. Whoa, look, it's like a brown vodka with like pine in it. What I would like is a nice pineapple juice. Hello, <laughs> how are you? Good? Good? This one, 5,500. Yep. Yes. Okay. And this one. Perfect. 8,500. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you from? I'm from England. England? Yes. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. <laughs> I got some good old pineapple juice. Okay. And I got like a whole thing of something. It looked really tasty. Okay. So I thought, I thought I'd just go for it. And the whole thing came to 8,500, which is like two pounds. <laughs> is that good? Very tasty. Look at 
Look at this crazy mountain. Yeah, super cool, hey? Yeah. There's a toll booth here, but I think... I think... It's probably... Ah, it's free! Okay. Cool! Well, here we go. We're going up into the mountains now. That's cool. Oh, some potholes here. Hello. Hello. Oh, with a baby. <laughs> oh, that's a big one. Yeah, it's a little bit slalom here. Yeah, not too easy. So what a stunning location, hey? Wow. Yeah, wow. Amazing, what a view, hey? What a view. Wow, yeah. Oh yeah, back on tarmac, back on the open roads. Look at this hairy fella running across the road. Oh my god, it's a yak and it looks like he's quite angry with that dog. That's the nice thing about this country. You can just stop anywhere you want on the side of the road, and go and lie on the grass. <sighs> That's nice. like the modern way to herd, hey? Just driving the car behind the herd, try to push them in one direction. There we go. Oh, we're gonna get a close yak encounter now. Oh, they're all running. Sorry, guys. Where are you going? Oh. Hey. Oh, I love yaks. Look at them. They're so, they're so fluffy. Yeah, they look cool. They're so cool. Hello. They're a bit like Highland Coos. Yeah. Yeah, look at this guy. Hello. Amazing. Yeah, as we're getting a bit further north into the mountain region, definitely seeing a lot more yaks. Yeah. Wow, beautiful animals. An upgraded, cuter, fluffier version of a cow. Anyway, we're bouncing along here. The road is not very good anymore. No, no. Got some sections of road missing. Some parts they thought, no, oh, this is just too many potholes. We're just going to take away the entire road. Anyway, we've got 26 miles more until we reach the lake. GPS tells us it should take us about 40 minutes. Sagan Lake. Ta -da! We've arrived. We're here. We're going to be looking to camp basically any of these gear camps. So maybe we should just check out these guys here. Oh Jesus, do you think I can get down here? I don't know. Can yeah, you? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Give it a go, eh? Yeah. Give it a go. Hello. Hello. Do you speak English? A little bit. A little oh. bit, okay. Do you have um, space for two people? Okay, okay. Yeah? Okay. 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 Yeah. Yes, around there, yeah? Uh, the last one. Yeah, yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. All okay. right. Perfect. <laughs> I think she meant this one. So, so cool. Right next to the lake. Yeah, Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm so excited. Cool. That looks nice. Hey, it looks cozy. Yes, and we will really enjoy tonight here. Yeah, this is going to be really, really, really nice. Yeah. I'll bring the bike over and then we can unload. Okay. Okay, so we just want to show you guys how 
convenient and amazing these Moscow Moto panniers are. So we want to bring our stuff into the gear. So just pull on this little tab, hoik it up. Can you do yours? You can do it, you got it. Yes. And then, boom, the entire pannier, we can just bring it in. Look at that. It's so a quick. And then the box. And then the tank bag. And that's it. So we went from like seven different items to bring in to just like five easy clip on items. Yeah. That's so good, hey? Come on, eh? Wow, that fire is cranking. That is putting out some kind of heat, I can tell you. It's so cozy because we were getting cold already and then the owner here, she brought in a lot of firewood and we were like, jackpot. <laughs> but then I tried lighting it with some paper and it was like, absolutely not happening so then we went and asked her and she brought over like this gas canister with like a blowtorch end on it she was just like you on fire <laughs> so it's a cozy end to a super interesting morning and a spectacular ride yeah i can't believe how beautiful mongolia is i'm so super surprised it's really one of the top countries i think we have visited so far on our trip because it's just so different the way how the people living here so far away from from our reality yeah. that it feels so alien but at the same time we are totally in love like we were talking about already getting a gear for ourselves you know because it's so cozy and nice I love it so we really can't wait to go back on the bike tomorrow and explore more and see more about this beautiful country and that's it from us today we hope you enjoyed the video if so please give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel share the video with your friends and family comment below and when you really really you really like our videos you can join us on patreon the link is in the description below <laughs> we will see you next time <laughs>